In this lecture we'll talk about variables, so what is a variable, but also uh, we'll talk about some of the different kinds of variables, uh, measured versus manipulated, conceptual versus operational, and then the dreaded, how do I tell if this is an independent variable or a dependent variable. Starting at the top with uh, just a general definition, what is a variable? Uh, so first of all, it has to vary, right? So that is implicit in even the word variable. It has to vary. It has to change from person to person. Um, so for example, one variable could be age. So all of my participants, you know, some of them are 19, 20, 21, 22, um, but this changes across individuals. So that would be one kind of variable. Another kind of variable would be gender, for example. Um, so we have approximately 50% of our participants are female, about 50% are male. That's another variable. So variables are really at the heart of the entire research process. So variables are the things that researchers are interested in. Sometimes we um, we change things across these variables and so they can have different levels. So for example, my gender variable has two levels. So that means you have two options for your gender variable, right? So you're either a male or a female. So that's a variable with two levels. Sometimes we just we just observe that kind of thing. Other times um, we might actually manipulate these variables. So for half of my people I'm going to put them into a room where they have five minutes to take a test. Another half of people are only going to get a minute to take this test. So there um, we have a variable of time that I have arbitrarily, uh, you know, randomly sorted people into two groups. Those two groups are my levels of that variable. So again at the top level variable something that changes across participants and it really is the the crux of of what the researcher is interested in. So getting started with our first distinction. Um, so you can have conceptual variables and you can have operational variables and really uh, these can be the same thing but they're represented in different ways. So for example um, when when the news, when reporters are talking about research, they're definitely talking about it at the conceptual level. So they might talk about um, anxiety as a variable. They talk about this in a very conceptual, um, overarching, just really general simplistic terms. So in that case um, our variable of anxiety is very conceptual. Researchers on the other hand when we're talking about uh, variables we have to talk about them in operational form. So you know I want to do a study on anxiety but what exactly does that mean? How am I going to measure anxiety? So I have to come up with an operational definition of my variable. So what does that mean? Well there are existing surveys concerning anxiety. So um, how much discomfort does it cause you to leave the house to go to a social party on a scale of one to seven? So maybe there's an entire questionnaire that has, you know, 50 questions similar to that that assess your social anxiety. And you add those up and you get a score of 50. So your score on this anxiety scale is a 50 and then based on all of the statistical information from that we know where your level of anxiety is with other people. So again, a variable is what we're interested in here. So I have the variable of anxiety. In the news they'll probably give you the conceptual definition. So maybe it's social anxiety. If you're talking to a researcher about it, they're going to give you the operational definition, which is to say I'm going to give 500 participants the um, uh, I don't know of an existing anxiety scale, but say there's a social anxiety questionnaire. So that's my operationally defined anxiety, is your score on my social anxiety questionnaire, and that's my operational definition. So let's zoom back out for a second. So a conceptual definition is a broad 
generalistic form of the variable. An operational definition it needs to get at the core of how it will be measured. So you can take conceptual variables and just change them a little bit and turn them into operational. You can take your operational variables, change them a little bit, and make them conceptual. Um, there's a, a serious back and forth that you can do here. Our next distinction is the measured versus manipulated variable. And this, this should seem pretty straightforward. So measured is something that the researcher is just going to observe. We're just going to ask information on it. So this is largely what our class survey was. So, you know, um, how many hours per week do you plan to study? We're just asking you. We're just measuring. Uh, what's your height? What is your weight? What is your blood pressure? All of those things we're just measuring. We're asking you for it. We're uh, sticking you on a scale to get that information. Uh, we're not really doing anything to it. We just want to know naturally uh, what is your response to that question? Or what is your, uh, what's your data on that? If we actually, you know, uh, uh, put you on a scale, what's your actual weight? Manipulated variables, on the, on the other hand, are things that researchers change. So we, we change these variables because we believe that they'll affect the participants in different ways. Uh, so for example, you could vary the amount of medication that you give different groups of people. So uh, say you have a group of anxious uh, participants, anxious clients perhaps, and you tell them, uh, you know, you're participating in a research study and I'm going to randomly assign you to one of two conditions. So one condition gets a low dose of anti-anxiety medication, the other gets a high dose. So here we're manipulating the dosage, which is our variable, um, to see how it influences, you know, behavioral symptoms or whatever down the line. So it's something that we change across people. Uh, we could also have, uh, some of my students did this project, uh, grad students last year uh, did this project where they were interested in the effects of stress on your ability to do math problems. And they were not particularly nice about this. They pulled real math problems from the GRE and made participants go through this. Some of the students, uh, they were told, you know, here are some math questions, take your time, go through it, check your work, you have as much time as you would like. The other group, unfortunately, were told, you have five minutes, finish all of these math questions, uh, at the end of five minutes, put down your pencils, and, and you can't work anymore from there. So here we have the variable of time and we have different levels of time. So at one level some people are given as much time as they want and at the other level uh, they're given five minutes and then cut off. So again it's something that the researchers are manipulating. They're changing across people. Maybe I'm interested in uh, you know do we study better alone or in groups? So study setting could be a variable that I'm interested in. And I'm going to tell half of my participants, okay, form a study group, study together. I'm going to tell another group, you can only study on your own. You cannot use any other people. You can't study around people. You need to go to a, loo a room, close the door, study completely by yourself. So this is the variable, uh, we'll call it study environment that has two different levels. Some people are allowed to study with other people, say three other people, and then the other, the other group is told to study alone. So those are all variables that we're manipulating. They're manipulated variables. It's something that the researcher is changing. Typically, uh, maybe not always, but typically your manipulated variable will also be your independent variable. Uh, so here we have, just talking about uh, the amount of medication. Uh, 
So I give one group a low dose, one group a high dose. So that would be an independent variable. So it's a variable that I've chosen, and I've chosen uh, different kinds of this variable. So some people get a low dose, some people get a high dose, and I'm expecting that to affect uh, something down the line later. So maybe. Um, uh, since we're sticking with an anxiety theme, maybe it's an anti-anxiety medication and then I'm expecting it to affect anxious behaviors like, uh, you know, playing with your pencil or tearing up little pieces of paper or whatever behavioral kinds of uh, displays that you could have from anxiety. So here we have the amount of medication as a variable, and then we also have the behavioral signs of anxiety as a variable. So to decide the independent versus dependent distinction here, ask yourself, did the researchers vary one of these two? Did they manipulate one of these two variables in the hopes of changing the other? And it's a pretty simple case here. So uh, I, I changed the dosage of the medication making it the independent variable, so that's what I changed, what I mess with, and then the dependent is left alone. So it's naturally going to change as a result of the independent variable. So here in this situation, the dependent variable would be the behavioral displays of anxiety. So I don't touch the dependent variable, I just ask about it, I measure it, however I'm operationally doing that, I go about it, but I do not manipulate that. So I manipulate the independent variable. Another example that I was talking about is the effect of the amount of time you're given for a test and then how well you perform on that test. So remember my example of my graduate students last year that gave some students five minutes to finish GRE math problems. Other students were given as much time as they needed. So this is an independent variable of time that has two levels. One level, five minutes. The other, as much time as you need. That's my independent variable. So I'm thinking that this, this timing will influence how well you do on this test. So theoretically, students that are given all of the time in the world will do better, right? So my other variable that I'm interested in, performance on the math test. So maybe it's a numerical, maybe it's 90% correct, 80% correct. That's my dependent variable. So it depends upon the conditions of my independent variable. So that's the independent dependent distinction. The best thing you can do, and again, we're going to continue working with these concepts throughout the, the course. So if you don't quite have it down yet, just keep working with it and you'll get there, I promise. But an independent variable is typically what the researcher will uh, finagle with, so to speak. So it's what they're changing. It's um, the amount of dosage they're giving people. It's the amount of time they're allowing for the test. It's um, the, the contact with other people. So do I let you study with other people or do I make you study alone? It's all of those kinds of things. The dependent variable is what I'm expecting to change as a result of my interventions. So I think that the differing levels of medications will impact your uh, behavioral signs of anxiety. I think that the amount of time I give you to complete a test will influence your subsequent score on that test. And then I think uh, whether I let you study with other people or alone, again, will impact how well you do on exams. So as you're working on understanding all of the different kinds of variables, all of the different levels, all of that kind of stuff, I encourage you to turn to this table. Uh, it's found on page 84 of your textbook, and it's just it's a, a learning actively uh, resource provided by your, your textbook author. And so research is really showing that you have to actively think about the material. So you don't really learn from reading. Um, or you might learn, but you'll forget it in the long term. But how you really remember things for long periods of time is to test yourself, right? So um, this table does exactly that. So it has a couple of rows. So remember, rows are horizontal across the screen. It has a couple of columns as well. So for each row, they have a different scenario. So here, the first one, 
uh, a questionnaire study asks for various demographic information including the participant's sex and then it wants you to go through and identify the conceptual variable name the levels of the variable it asks if it's measured or manipulated and then it asks for the operational definition of the variable so here they've done the first one for you um, so this is sex or, or gender so the conceptual variable name might be participant sex or gender we know that we have two levels of this variable male female is this measured or manipulated well it's not really ethical to assign someone a gender so we just measure it right and then the operational definition well you just have people circle male or female on a form it's pretty straightforward the second one here questionnaire study asks about self-esteem measured on a 10 item Rosenberg self-esteem scale so here we have a conceptual variable name self-esteem uh, it has well it'll it's it'll have quite a few levels right because there's a 10 item self-esteem scale is it measured or manipulated uh, here it says that they're just asking about it so it's measured if I did something that I thought would um, influence this for example if I made you fill it out in front of a mirror um, then it might be manipulated but here it seems pretty straightforward we're just asking people and then the operational definition is the 10 item self-esteem scale so as you're you're working with these concepts I strongly encourage you again this is the learning actively uh, exercise at the end of chapter 3 on page 84 go through these and, and, and see if you can identify the different parts because uh, it, it will help with your understanding of, of these different variable types um, you know what's a variable what's a variable level what's an independent what's a dependent all of those kinds of things um, but again, we, we will continue talking about this uh, as the chapters move forward. So uh, if you're starting to understand it, that's exactly where I'd like you to be. Just stick with it and you'll be fine.